You ready, Freddy? Yeah, on the board. everybody welcome to in production it is i jeff <laughs> welcome to in production today yeah. we're uh we're pretty excited yeah for the most part we are we've had a rough <laughs> uh rough go of it uh, uh we're gonna have a video drop this afternoon flashbacks uh, of everyone yeah in a way so we're starting a uh the video will drop today we're starting a brand new uh video series uh from the post house that is on nothing but HDR, how to get it ready for YouTube and all that. So it's obviously going to be one of those things, like if you've seen it in HDR, uh, if you can watch it in HDR, it looks amazing. It's yes. some of that it looks footage. looks way better in HDR. Yeah, it's crazy. It's some New York City nighttime, daytime, uh, some footage uh, supplied by the very talented Sully Cortez. Yep. Uh, Sent it over to us, shot it per our specifications, really rock and rolled it. Really gorgeous footage. Uh, so that'll be dropping. If you can see it in HDR, great. We're working on the SDR side, the LUT side. We don't want to post two videos because it messes up a whole lot of other things inside of our channel network and how things flow. So anyway, we've got that coming out. Um, you know, it'll it'll drop sometime this afternoon, so make sure you check it out if you yeah. have a chance. At some point it'll drop. Yeah, I mean, I have to redo it. We've probably done 20 different versions. We think YouTube might have changed Pretty something close. on the back end, or DaVinci has changed yeah. something. Uh, One of the 14. two has. But it's definitely a new problem. Yeah. Anyway, that's just something we've been focusing on and just completely threw ourselves off just to give you a heads up. Yeah. That's what we're doing. So if you're new to the show or you've just come for some Evil One footage, some evil footage, uh, then hang out. We're going to have that shortly. So in production is uh, two knuckle turds uh, with an amazing community supporting us. Uh, yeah. And we talk about everything camera related. Sometimes we get a little uh, focused on one camera over another, but we talk about production. We talk Have about... We? Yeah, talk about cinematography, directing, editing, post, post producing, a whole lots of different crap. Yep. Yeah. Pretty much everything. Yeah, pretty much everything we can. Yeah. Um, occasionally we just go off on tangents. Mostly um, you. Yeah, mostly yeah. me. My tangents are off air. Anyway, I can see that that some of the old farts are here. Yep. Uh, Sailing rewind. Good to see you. <laughs> what a great segue. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that was I didn't, terrible. I didn't, I, didn't see, I didn't see the word fart sailing. I actually saw evil. I saw the word evil one and thought it said fart and thought you were calling yourself an old fart. You're a delight. By no means would I ever call you that. But that's why I swear I thought that's what it said. Um, yeah. Are you lurking? Is that what that says? I can't read this far. Is it, it says, is I'm Ichi, here, talk to me. Oh, no, Ichi, yeah. Ichi's lurking. Ichi's lurking because he wants to see an evil one. So yeah. just to give you a heads up, this comes from our very dear friend, uh, Brain Vision. Brain Vision, who's, who's been. On our chat as well, right? Yeah, now. Brain Vision, uh, yeah. buddy. We're gonna drop your bombs, yo. Anyway, Brain uh, Brian got his hands on um, some. Got his hands on an evil one. He had uh -huh. talked to us. He had called us. We've had long conversations. We're gonna do a bunch of tests together as a team. Um, very, very smart guy. Very proud of him. Um, very, very clever on how he's kind of approached business and really great rapport. Love the dude to death. Anyway, he got one, so he called me to brag and show me pictures, camera porn. And um, in the process, I just asked him if he would just shoot some random footage. We don't really care what right now. I'm not looking for anything crazy. Yeah. But what we did ask him to do is shoot in log so that we could actually do some HDR work in it as well. And so he was nice enough to give us some uh, 1080 HDR or 1080 log files that we were able to make mm -hmm. into 1080 HDR files. Uh, we just didn't have the time or focus at this point to do a whole big 4K version. I don't really care yeah. right now. Frankly, this live stream is Just where you're going to see it, and that's all we're going to give you anyway is 1080. Yeah. So uh, we do have that stuff we're going to show. Jeff, of course, took the footage and did a grade to it. Um, we left. He, he burned in the data for us, as we asked. Uh, burned in the data so you can kind of see some of the specs. And we will show you an expanded grade and a slightly and colorized grade. And a slightly, slightly colorized. Right, so version. now you have both. Just barely. So it's kind of fun. You're going to get both of those uh, to kind of play with. Yeah. In that space uh, we've also got a preview today of uh, one of our first shows and give some feedback or whatever yeah we do but we do have a preview it's raw it's still in its, uh -huh. its log format 
But we have a new show that we're going to premiere called Small Batch Creative. We've talked about it before. I would love for some of our community members to be on the show. It's very easy. I can talk you through it. Mm -hmm. But it would be very cool to have that perspective as well. It's all about being a creative, how you find passion, maintain that passion, keep that passion going. Or if you're one of those insane people that's a creative in a, in, in a, in a location that doesn't necessarily really yield itself to a lot of creative work, you know, it's just about staying motivated and how you're surviving and doing that. So our yes. first subject is a really talented photographer named Elise Poche, uh, quite the lovely young lady, mm -hmm. very smiley, has this great like <clears throat> glow about her. Um, she's very talented as a photographer, but it's kind of her journey of how she owns a bar and yet that's not a real motivation. A real motivation is being a photographer and she's yes. taken some insanely amazing photographs. So uh, she's an icon person, so it is not a biased uh, piece no, one way or the other all. in yeah. fact it looks like a Nikon commercial so sorry does. Matt sorry Sean uh, send me another Lumix and uh, you know we'll do a <laughs> send me the G9 and we'll uh, get oh, yeah. her to do a video about the G9 you guys should do that right away also please send an Eva one we need five of them because we're gonna do a community made film with the Eva one I know that's not your department Sean but make it happen what if we just throw a very cam in there as well why not send a very cam just send, us, just send it on down. Just it ain't gonna hurt nothing. That's what we say down here in the south. Ain't no, ain't nobody gonna be done by it. Let's talk about what yeah. beer we're drinking. Oh god. Yeah. All right. So today we're drinking another rare beer. We're drinking uh, from Maine Beer Company. Jeff brought this back. He yep. smuggled it. Uh, you don't want to know how he smuggled it back. <laughs> Not the way you're talking about. <laughs> I was gonna say it was in your beard. No. Oh, that one on the beard either. <laughs> Anyway, we're drinking a tiny, a tiny beautiful something. Yeah. That's what she said. Uh, it's a pale ale. And we've started drinking yet. Yeah, I've not had nothing. I've got a little food buzz. Um, I've been eating like super calorie food. Anyway, uh, so we're drinking Maine beer. It's a rare beer for us. We'll just yes. set that little guy right there so yep. everyone can see it. And we'll see it in the screen. In and we don't have any cups because they refuse to let us use the kitchen in this building anymore. <laughs> so I'm drinking mine out of my coffee cup. Yeah. And I'm the only other cup we have in the office. It's not bad. No, it's not. It's a little uh, older my, pale ale. Yeah. But. I can tell the age. <laughs> it's uh, it's a little bit there. There's a, Mine has a hint of coffee. Um, that's because and that's my coffee no cup. Coffee. Yeah. Let's pop up those comments. Yeah. Do you love the comments? Hey, it's some comments. Are they working, gang? Yep. All right. They are working. We got the comments up. Let's yeah. see who's hanging out with us. We got Brain Vision, Jefu, Ichidomo, Sailing Rewind, Little Camera Films, Scott mm -hmm. Slaughterbeck, Evil kind One. Kind of a cool name. Yeah, it's a cool name. Evil One or C200? Good question. Uh, uh, I've shot the C100, 200, 300. Never shot an Evil One. Never uh, shot a 200 or an Evil One. Yep. You had yeah. me at uh, MPEG-1. Zombie Cowboy's back. Good to see yeah. you, Zombie. Andrew Gebby. Get the brew dog out. You got it. Uh, yeah, me and Andrew have talked about the brew dog Present. before. Jeff's look like he's drinking out of a giant bottle. He is drinking out of a giant bottle. Oh, yeah. That's his there big baby oh. bottle. Um, yeah, so that's what we got going on. So, first things first, uh, let's what talk about gonna, stuff. What are we going to talk about? I don't know. Let's talk about HDR for a second because I'm, I'm still a little fixated on it. <laughs> Which um, part of HDR? The nightmare that it's become. The nightmare of... We only deal with the uh, MPEG. It's just so you know. Whenever we refer to HDR from this point forward, it's HDR ten. It's only PQ. Um, I know you love HLG. We can talk about HLG, but we're gonna focus on HDR ten because as filmmakers, I want them to see it exactly how I want them to see it with no alterations. Whoa! So we're just gonna. We have a new way. member of the community talking to us. Is that Grimes? Stephen Grimes. Oh, you guys <laughs> might remember Stephen Grimes. He's been on the show before, but Six as top. a face, we call him Six Top. There he is. Yep. So if you ever have any question for any. Uh, when, whistle when you start talking about you. <laughs> Thanks, Sailing Rewind. I appreciate it. Always there to lend a helping hand. Um, so, to clarify, yeah. we talk about HDR. We're not talking about how hard it is for us to get HDR up because we've got that down. Uh -huh. HDR uploads is not a problem. No, the HDR uploads on issues. The problem is um, the, the biggest news. issue is the Pixel Peeper community and the camera community and the, and, the, and the people who love to look at things and stare at things community. Yeah. is going to tear it apart. This episode? No, maybe not. But, I mean, it's not... No, they will. 
it doesn't match. When you see the HDR and you see the SDR, it doesn't match. So if you don't no. know what we're talking about, exactly. HDR is high dynamic range, SDR is uh, standard dynamic range, and there's a huge issue between the two of them on YouTube now. We had some of these problems with Heirloom, if you remember that back. Um, if you didn't get to see that in HDR, it sucks. Um, we will have a 709 version at festivals at some point. Yeah. Um, and then Just one day we can put board. it online. But uh, it's really a shame that if you can't see it in HDR, it's a gorgeous looking thing. Uh, the SDR LUT did okay. It didn't do as well as we wanted. And we're still having, or now we have new issues where the SDR is yeah. flattening out. And so basically what happens is it looks like 2020 out too much. on 709. Yeah. So you end up with this really flat image, yeah. uh, which two, three years ago, every Levi's jean commercial on the planet would have done anything to achieve this image. And yeah. now me and Jeff know how to do it in our sleep. Yeah. Pretty close. Do you guys think that that Vimeo look that was so popular, that flat hipster look, was just like people shooting log who had no business shooting log, and so they didn't know how actually how to grade it? Or was it some creative director, Stephen Grimes, that was sitting around coming up with great ideas to really subtle, subtly just milk up the image, Stephen Grimes, and put things in a way that... I'm just kidding. Grimesy doesn't do that. Grimesy's an no, awesome. Grimesy has it. Grimesy's fantastic at it. Anyway, I just want to talk about HDR for a minute. Uh, to buy us a little more time. Uh, MPEG no, has a question. Yeah. He asked if we're abandoning HLG altogether. Not really. HLG does not look good in both. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I disagree with you. It, it's true. I would rather well, just have I think an he's SDR. talking about if you if take you have HLG to and then you... No, if you take HLG and then throw it over to a 709 color space, which it does. Which is what no, no, that's fair enough. Stuff. Yeah. But I'd rather, have, I'd rather have a hard-graded SDR I and then too. a hard-graded PQ than just land in the middle with HLG, personally. I that's agree. just a personal thing. And uh, I don't like that software is changing the way my image looks. Yes. This is where the party's at, this Trev. This is Trev. Who we're waiting on uh, you. And CPQ looks... PQ looks good as an HDR, to me, way better than HLG does. Yeah, there's... I would, wow. Like, MPEG, if you have a chance, when we drop this video, I was talking about it earlier, I don't know if you caught the beginning of it, but we're going to drop it sometime today. Yeah. But if you have a chance, try and watch it in HDR if you can. Um, it'll trigger in 10, obviously. Chromecast Ultra, uh, it's it's working pretty well. And the... Who cares about us? Like, we didn't... That That's not the point of it, but when you see this nighttime New York footage, like, the detail of being able to see into windows at night, have the sky exposed with texture, to then have multiple levels of dynamic range involved, and then to see, like, literally, you're seeing into the windows, you can see people standing in the windows. Um, it's really insane. There's no blowouts, there's detail to them, there's detail throughout the entire images, it's crazy. There is. Uh, Jeff did a fantastic job grading it, Sully did a great job shooting it, and I did a great job just sitting here uh, <laughs> talking about it. Yeah, because you didn't even cut it. I didn't do shit. <laughs> Tull. Shittle. I didn't do shittle. Exactly. Hashtag All you did shittle. was uh, the, the front end yeah. talking. Um, yeah, so if you haven't, yeah, iPhone X supposedly plays HDR. It's a limited number of nits, 700 nits. Um, yeah, I haven't even, I've, I've not looked at white papers yet yeah. on that. I just yeah. know I don't have the thousand dollars to pay for the phone, so I'm just yeah. not worried about I it. I did drop your name a lot, Grimesy. I totally dropped your name. <laughs> I was celebrating you as a champion of, of, of champions. You're supposed to call, oh, we were supposed to talk next week. That's right. Because you lost my phone number. You conveniently um, lost it. And he conveniently has mine and just never texted. He doesn't like you, though. I know he doesn't like me. Yeah, we had a whole conversation about it. Yeah, I'm it. pretty sure he doesn't like me yeah, at all. Yeah, it has to do with glasses. Probably does. At least it's not the beard. No, he likes your beard. He just doesn't That's like fine. your face. That's fine. <laughs> I'll just grow a bigger beard. Yeah. Uh, um, hold on. Yeah, I'm uh, trying to get back here. When they arrive, we're talking about the evil one. Everyone's asking about how many abbreviations have to make a great... Uh, six. Six. What is this? How many abbreviations do we need to know how to make a great movie? I would say six. Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, I know it's not true, Grimesy. How is the evil one? I, I can't speak to it. Brain Vision, uh, if you guys want to ask him questions about that stuff, uh, yeah, well, about how physically holding it, we did not physically shoot it. Yeah, we just was, got to play with the post on it. So I was going to say it was we just should some clarify. Footage we asked him to send over to us so we could kind of look at the clarity of it. I will, I will give my impressions as we kind of go through it. Um, we do not have an evil one. Yeah. Our friend Brain Vision, who's a community member, has that. Uh, he's in the chat somewhere hanging out. Um, uh, actually, Trev, just going to your comment about HLG. Um, no, HLG does not eliminate grading in posts. It, it, it does doesn't. not. Uh, it does make a decently okay image to throw up right away. It's actually, uh, it's 
And on a broadcast professional engineering standard, HLG is fantastic for broadcast mm -hmm. engineering because it allows HDR content to go out over broadcast without a crazy amount of, of reconstruction that needs to occur. However, outside of that broadcast space, I find HLG to be a little bit of a prosumer, leaning towards consumer um, concept, uh, which I'm sure like GH5 owners are going to be pissed yeah. about, but it's that true. Or broadcast. But I said broadcast. Yeah, I know. If you would have been paying attention. I was paying what me and Jeff found is, I mean, the idea is you can pop it out of your camera and plug it into your TV and play it, and then suddenly you have HDR that way. Whereas, I think on a professional level, you can still use HLG to do that, but if you're really dealing with the bigger end studios, or you're really wanting to compete on that level of really high, the highest grade you can possibly can, can pull out of this mm -hmm. without buying Dolby Vision, yeah. you're shooting log, exactly. and you're then taking that log and grading it correctly for HDR10 specs. Yes. All right. The other thing that Jeff found, we've talked about it before, is that most uh, HDR TVs at the moment can't even hit the true white point anyway. Um, they just don't mm -hmm. exist yet. So you're grading for something that doesn't even really exist yet. So it's it's not just future-proofing, as people say. Yeah. It's it's so much more beyond that. So that that's kind of the HLG side. I, it, again, broadcast standard, it's fantastic. It does what it needs to do. But for any other reason, if I was really looking at HDR specs... Uh, and I was I was concerned with my delivery, and I wanted to make sure that the audience saw it the way I wanted. I would focus on HDR10. But if mm -hmm. I was just a soccer dad that wanted to go film my kids and then look at their, you know, playing yeah. soccer and and watch them in HDR, then I would definitely do HLG. I think that's where it's handy. And before anyone brings up the BBC, please understand the BBC is a broadcast channel, and broadcast technology that. is what they're after. It's also a company that helps stream uh, football, from what I understand. Yeah. Traditional soccer. Yeah, they, football. yeah. So they're uh, very much invested is, in broadcast. Yes. So which it's a ESPN, broadcast. Thing. Sports. Right. They're all going to be HLG. Yeah. Again, broadcast. Movies, not broadcast. Movies are cinema. Very big difference. It's a big post pipeline that goes yes, through it. Major difference. Um, huge amount of work on either side of it. All right. HDR, let's see. What do we got? Uh, well, um, are you going to get one? Can you edit HLG in the same way you can edit Vlog L? Can't you edit? Yes, but yeah, right now, every, unless it. you're in DaVinci, everything strips the metadata out of it. Final Cut X is supposedly going to support it soon. Yeah. Someone says so IDOS, whatever that stuff is, uh, already supports it, but I don't have it, so I can't test it. A lot well, of people are saying it I does HDR. I think it's only a Windows or a Linux system, too. Got it. I don't think Premiere can. shows HDR, but it doesn't Worst actually hold the metadata tags correctly. It changes yeah. the color space on export. We've proven it to ourselves multiple yeah. times until they do the patch. That's even working off the new one. We have a little more testing to do. Yeah. We may have found a workaround, but we're not ready to tell it yet because we don't totally know if it works. Yeah. Um, Come Grimesy, I know you. You, I'll give you GH five, bro. You're like the perfect person. You're a creative director. You can take photos. You can film your kids playing soccer. You can get in trouble for VR. Inside joke. Um, uh, I'm just going through the comments here. Yeah. Log equals movie making storytelling. Yeah. Um, best MPEG. So you cannot ever achieve the same image in P PQ that you can in HLG. That's that's like. Uh, that's like a pendulum statement. You're saying it's an either or. No, I think you probably can, but I just find that working in PQ, you can HLG will take more work. Yeah, but but it. PQ maintains the image that I want to be. Yes. I want seen more so than HLG does. Yes, on a broadcast standard, um, I'm forcing them to deal with the way I present the image in HLG. They have control over that. Although technically, all broadcasters have control over they that do. side of it. Really, the abbreviation you need to know is that Scott R. Brilliant quote. Baby Seal Troll Force for the win. We love it. Yes, in Ventry, everyone should be using it. Peter Jackson using 120, <laughs> that 125 like that. HDR, 24 bit in his new movie, Lord of the ESPN. Brilliant. Love it. Absolutely love it. Mm -hmm. Does G9 tomorrow have better autofocus than GH5? Don't know. Um, not rudely. Don't care. Um, yeah. I uh, personally think it probably does for stills. Yeah, I think it's built for that. I think but it's built more I, for I don't know. I've never else. even researched. I haven't looked at anything no on idea. it yet myself. Sailing Rewind, once you see some evil one footage as our stream <laughs> really freezes. wants to. Yeah. How about we just freeze oh, the stream that. on you? Yeah. All right, so what we will then do since Sailing Rewind runs this show, we're so going to we get should, rid of these comments. Why don't we do the original, original thing? No, because I don't need a break yet. <laughs> just saying. Oh, yeah, just Because in Sailing Rewind, Rewind yeah. doesn't get his thing. Yeah. No, that's fine. Let's go to Eva. That's fine. Yeah. 
All right, so what we're about to show you is some EVA 1 footage. This is from our friend Brain. It is hastily shot, just throwing it together for us. This is not yeah. super technical stuff. Did not critique. He did a very good job um, exposing it for the most part. Yes. Where we asked him to expose it, we had certain things we wanted done. So if you have a beef with it, you can shoot all the hate mail to us. We don't really care. Uh, we, we had reasons for testing this for things that we don't tell you. But we had our own reasons for it, and he was nice enough to help us. Um, so anyway, here's some of the footage. So this first shot, I'll let Jeff talk about how we're going to structure these real quick, or I'll tell you, and then Jeff will talk about yeah, what you we did. Talk. So the front half, the first shot we're going to show is just an expanded log. So there's no reason just to show the raw log. I think that's a waste. So this is an expanded log, and then we'll show the exact same clip again, and you guys can see it with a uh, little bit of a grade. Is yeah, so it's slight. Just a little tweak. Yeah, just slight. Just off of what the scopes told me. Yeah, basically. exactly. So uh, here is the first clip we've got. There you go. And so we've got these uh, pretty little purple flowers yep. just kind of sitting clouds. there. Sky cloud, yeah. Lots of color. It's holding up pretty well. So now I'm going to play the next clip. Here is the next clip. You'll see it start over. Jeff added a little bit. A little bit of warmth. Yeah, a little bit of warmth to it. It's, it's not a minor much. thing, but there's a little it's bit a, to it. It's mostly because the scopes are reading that the EVA 1 seems to have a slight blue-green bias to it. So there you go, tip number uh, one. Even, more, we believe the EVA 1 has a slight blue-green bias. From the way that Brian shot all this, yes. Uh, right. It seems to have a green-blue bias. All right, so here's another one that shows a little more cloud detail. Again, this is an expanded clip. This is yeah. just setting the expansions right. You get a little more cloud detail, and I think this guy, whoever he is, we don't know. We, we, it might be Brain. But yeah, we're not sure. where I get excited is I'm going to let this play. This is the same clip again. I'll tell you when we're changing over. Look at the depth of field shift on this. I think it's really yeah. fascinating to watch how much more. I mean, when it snaps in and you see that focus lock in, look at the look at the separation. Yeah. Suddenly he's like really separated from the background. And that's that nice like kind of super 35 vibe that, you know, again, it's daylight exterior. It's not super cinematic. This is just test footage he sent us. I requested outside with shadows exactly this because we are doing something we can't talk about yet, but we wanted to see that. So look at the separation on him when this focus snaps in. What do you, you have any thoughts on it? Yeah, I mean the one thing is uh, for anybody pixel peeping the clouds up there is uh, they actually did have a clipping on the cloud, so I took it just below broadcast safe to keep it in so you can see what all's there. Uh, but yeah, the, the uh, there's some incredible dynamic range from all the way from the darks over on the far left all the way to the clouds. Yeah. Uh, I've been thoroughly impressed with it. So here's a little bit. Here's this version we're about to play again. So this Slightly version, you can, you can see it warmed up. Uh, and these are just minor little grades. We're just looking at yeah. it for color pops and how we would saturate for commercial needs. But you can kind of see that little that little beat there of, of warming it up. Again, look at how much more. When Jeff does that little warm thing to me, it separates the subject. Whoever this guy is, if Brain, if it's you, awesome. But whoever this fella is, separating him in the foreground from the background is really nice to me. It's a very pretty, and this yeah. was shot with a Sigma art lens. This was a, a Sigma art lens is what he was using. Okay, I didn't even know the lens. Yeah, he told me. So, we didn't okay. ask about the yeah. lens, I just wanted the footage. I yeah. didn't really care about glass, but he did send me a text and gave me a heads up. All right, let's jump to the next clip, which is a little more skin yeah. tone base. It is. Talk about this. Yeah, I mean, this one, you can clearly see it's, it's a brighter, which uh, took a little while, but I'm pretty sure that he was slightly shaded from a little bit of cloud cover in the other one. Uh, but this one to me turned out to be great. It's a skin tone in the dark, in light, with a red car driving past. Right. Which gives a great separation, saturation pop in it to see how heavy it deals with red because a lot of cameras have a problem dealing with red saturation. That's true. So, all right, so I'm going to hit the button. So here is the clip. You can see Jeff warmed it up a little bit to, to pull in the tones for something. And so we brought in a little more uh, color punch into it. A little looks like you brought in some warmth into the into the black channels. So there we can see the, that little section. So what we're going to do is take a quick break. We have more footage to show you. We're going to take a quick break, real quick. We're going to jump back over to the stream, pop, yeah. and we're going to pop up the comments. And yeah, what do you guys? What what are you thinking about it? There you go. There's some even one footage. I'm sure there's way better stuff out there that you've seen. But yeah. interestingly enough, this is Verite sort of like throw it up and go. And the reason we wanted it this way, very specifically this way 
is we all know we can take a ton of time and light things. Hell, we lit a cave with a GH5 with with consumer that. lights, guys. We did it, and it looked good. We're Again, the SDR, if you see the full SDR, the true SDR grade, it's amazing. If you've seen it in HDR, it's even more amazing. We did that with that, right? So when you have time to kind of structure your shot and find the right location, great. But what happens if you're in a verite or a doc moment or something in that space? And to me, I was happy with what he had given us. And there's even more to show. There's a really cool thing. I can't wait to show this next clip. But looking through it, seeing where it landed, um, I actually am pretty impressed by it. My wife was asking today. I was showing her some of the footage. Uh, and she was like, oh, that looks really good. And then the next question was, are you getting one? And I was like, well, that's that's something me and Jeff have to kind of sort yeah. out. We're hoping our friends at Lens Rentals, they're supposed to get one on the 20th. And we're going to rent one. Yeah. yeah. We're going to rent one. Always and, rent before you buy. Yeah, 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 totally. So that's the thing. Remember the, the tip. Rent before you buy. And let me just shamelessly plug them. Lens Rentals is our favorite place to rent before you buy. Yes, you might need a credit card. But here's why. They're just really nice. We missed our FedEx drop-off point. We did not get charged another day. It's not a hack. We weren't taking advantage of them. We genuinely missed it. We raced to get there. Did not happen. They were nice enough. They were cool enough to be like, yeah, just do what you got to do. Get it back to us in the morning to make sure you send us uh, a signal or a picture of the of the uh, receipt. So point is, that's the kind of rental house that I love dealing with. Those that will be nice enough to do that. So rent before you buy lens rentals. We'll post a link. It's in all of our videos. Click on the affiliate link. It helps us. It helps you. I think you guys get $25 off your first rental. We get $25 off a rental, which you know, we're going to dump back in on you guys. It's not a shameless plug for them. But when we're talking about new gear, I don't know a better way of doing it than renting from a place like that that doesn't require you to sure. have production insurance. We sure. do, but if you don't, yeah. they're even going to let you rent. You, you pay a couple extra out. bucks and you can get, and it's insured. So you're protected on the job. All right, let's look at comments. Anything fun happening? I should probably pop these uh, back up correctly. There we go. Trev, did he have the EIS on? Yes, he did. Yep. Um, going down from right there. Yep. Uh, I was a little surprised, Trev, with the whites being blown out a little bit, uh, but there still is quite a bit of dynamic range in there. And then also, again, uh, th th just know that I haven't physically touched the camera, so I'm giving brain requests on my behalf. I yeah. ask him to, to get him to a certain level, IRE level, and uh, because I wanted to see what it would do in certain ways, and pushing those up, um, I did not dig into the white paper to give him a full blowout on it. I just gave him what I needed for me and Jeff to do our, our punch. The depth of field punch is incredibly nice. I yeah. mean, he didn't stack a bunch really of ND was. on it. Like, you know, like if you're really shooting hard and heavy and you stack a bunch of ND, well, I think it's going to look phenomenal. And one of the clips that we're going to show yeah. is another piece. Yeah, also. I was going to show that. For it, yeah. Um, Which is really nice. Is, is ISO 800 base ISO? I believe it is because it's that dual ISO thing. I believe it is, but I'm not sure myself, actually. I've yeah. not done much research on that. Yeah. No. Yeah, it is the 18 to 35. Uh, Scott R is uh -huh. asking. That is the Sigart lens. Um, Brain, if I'm wrong, jump in here, dude. You don't, There it yeah. is. Um, oh, sorry. No worries, Brain. He's having some trouble getting He's in. He's having problems. Aloha from Norway. The Vikings are here. The Vikings. Yes. Um, Scott R always makes me laugh. I know it, Scott. Uh, Aspen, good to see you, brother. Uh, and you can have a base ISO, right. You can move all over the place from user res. Very clean image that way. It does. I actually was shocked at how good the image looked. Um, look, there's going to be noise in all of it. Man, we just shot some killer log footage uh, that we'll show you here momentarily. Yeah. Um, and it's got some it's grain got in, noise it, in it. Yeah. But it looks phenomenal. Like, we yeah. are really happy with just a little bit of noise correction and moving on. And when you guys see, I'm telling you, when you see this nighttime footage, uh, you've got to try and see it in HDR. It is mind blowing. Um, we may post a separate one like a week from now, or maybe I'll just repost the video again with a different intro or something. It just messes up YouTube's metrics when we when yeah. we go that way. Uh, it does have built in ND. Um, it does. Yeah. Uh, do I? So I forgot about that. Thank you. Yeah, it is Ishimoto. Dual. Yeah, it's eight hundred and twenty five hundred. Yeah. Um, yeah. The 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 dual ISO is great. I think you know again. As a low light camera, I don't know, but looking at the shadow play in this, it looks fantastic. So, with that said, um, yeah, I mean, for us the Evo, we still have a lot of testing we have to do with the Evo one. Right. Yeah. Uh, and we're actually gonna get, we're gonna go meet and hang out with Brain, and we're gonna try and live stream while we're testing to see if we can get you guys as many questions, or when we rent one, or whatever happens. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna get up with Brain and then shoot some GH5. We're gonna bring a red. We're gonna we're gonna stack them all and do one of our stupid versus videos because I think they're important. 
not because one camera is better than the other, but that's the only way I know how to tell which look I'm after. To say one camera is yeah. going to do it all is the dumbest thing in uh, the world. you got to test all different kinds, shoot with all different kinds. Like we said, prof yeah. scene profiles are like film stocks and cameras are like film stocks. So I want to know how the camera interprets noise one way or the other. Uh, I was just having a conversation. Oh, we were just talking to a client about um, he shoots Sony. And we were talking about the... Oh, yeah. And he was freaking out because he didn't realize the GH5 yeah. in log didn't have to shoot it. What does the Sony shoot at? 1600 ISO or whatever yeah, it is? Yeah, I think it was. Is Either it that or 3200. Or 3200, whatever it is, whatever it is the A7S where it shoots yeah. this crazy high ISO. And he's like, man, I was stacking so much ND. And we're like, oh, well, we shot at 400. And he was like, what? And we showed him some stuff and he saw heirloom and HDR and was yeah. floored by it. Though the only downside was his TV was stuck on that stupid refresh rate crap. And so everything we looked like we shot in uh, interlaced. Long story short. All right. Let's go ahead and pop these guys back down for a moment. You guys yep. can keep chatting away. We're going to jump into some more footage. So what we have again is a little close-up work. This texture here, uh, again, this is the expanded version. There's yeah. a little bit of moreing happening on our screens. I don't know if it's happening on the stream. A little bit, yeah. It doesn't look like it's on the stream. Yeah, it does um, not. <laughs> Actually, there, it's good on the stream. There's, there's our hero, whoever our superhero is yeah. at, at the moment. Um, you know, I didn't think to... Uh, and we are not saying that because we want to hide brain from everybody, Brian. But it's because we honestly do not know if that's Brian or not. Yeah, we don't know if that's you, champ. So, yeah, so it, it holds up fairly well. It's a nice little, yeah. again, doco-feeling shot. There's not a lot of contrast. I mean, his shirt's punchy. You can definitely see some punch there. One of my favorite things that they did, though, in this was this, where they turned to a bright, punchy thing and showed the internal ND. Yeah, there you work. go. Uh, so that if your question really is nice on the ND, addition. you can now see the ND working, which is pretty nice to have. Um, and somebody, this is what the warmed up version. You can see it in the whites. Jeff put a little more color back in. So somebody was asking like the EVA 1 versus the C200. At this point, I take the EVA 1 cost for cost wise because I get 4K dual slots. I get all the things I want. It's just going to come down to a matter of functionality versus it. But for the docos, uh, long form type work, it seems pretty good. I don't know if I'd still make it like a super cinema camera. And jump on that know, yeah. wagon, yeah. yeah. Uh, until we play with it and kind of put it through that format. Yeah, I want to see it with color charts and distortion charts and how it handles all that stuff. Yeah, there's a whole see lot of data stars. that we still want to do before we can vouch yeah. for it one way or the other. But the footage in its raw form and its verite form, this is yeah. all very much cinema verite. Uh, I love watching this ND switch on. It just makes me happy. Yeah. It just makes me happy. Uh, MPEG, I'm pretty sure it's not an automatic one. It, it looks like it's a built-in switchable. ND. Yeah. Uh, that I think they were he's just cycling through. through yeah. yeah. He's just cycling through. So then we have this white truck here. You get some nice texture detail out of it. You can kind of see him rolling through the focus. Uh, and then Ishimoto, uh, just to answer yours, I did not in this stuff yet. Um, I think that needs a little bit more testing this to make absolutely positive. I don't know. I think they've, I think IR Pollution, I think they've been able to coat stuff better they than have they used to. but i mean there's there's no like true blacks in this anywhere to really be able to push it yeah to see i mean only part. maybe that the, the yeah. black of that mirror is probably fairly close but i'd like to do a lot more need to do it with the chart yeah there you go guys if you have questions brain is on the chat yep. ask brain vision he shot this stuff he is a evo one owner so here's jeff's colorized version nothing too crazy on it um very simple just subtle kind of rolling through um you can kind of see the background texture it's nice uh, I wanted to jump into these because it's kind of nice to see these little kind of floral close-ups. And frankly, anytime you see a camera video, any kind of test video, there has to be some kind of plant involved. Yeah, and this Otherwise, actually, these two clips were not shot in log. No. These two were, I, I'm going to say Scenic 5 is what I think it is. SCN yeah. 5. Yeah. Um, so this is Jeff grading some non-log footage. Yeah. Right. And that's uh, almost no expansion to it. Right, so this is almost uh, the raw image. Yeah, it's almost raw. More or less raw. Yeah. Okay, so let's call this it. more or less raw. It's very close. This is a more or less raw image, and then we'll switch over, and here's... Is this one the same thing? Uh, that one's slightly warmed up. So slightly warmed up, yeah. just very little Just stuff. slightly. Yeah, so you might it still has green. a slight green bias uh, to the whole thing. Yeah, which I mean, Sonic, though. I mean, Sony yeah, has theirs, everybody has their bugs. It's honestly not terrible. Right. Uh, I just did it to make it, it's actually more of a neutral balance grade that I'm doing onto it. It looks warm compared to the green blue. There we go. Um, All right, so then this last clip, we get a toadstool. 
a toadstool. So we have a nice little to toadstool here. Again, this is Scenic 5. Um, more or less, this is a raw image. Uh, more or less, yeah, it's right out of the camera, right? And, and you can kind of tell the highlights are blasted in the back because it's not really... Yeah. Any of these profiles are, are not really built for that. I mean, you would need... To, technically, if I were doing this and I was really shooting this mushroom, I would be lighting the mushroom right now. I'll light the mushroom and then probably silk out some of the back, honestly. I don't think you'd have to run a net. I don't uh, think you'd probably you could have that out. I think you'd have to expose for back there and then lift yeah, the mushroom. Yeah, you'd have to. Yeah. So you expose for the background, lift the mushroom. Yeah. And even then, uh, it's blobbing out. I don't know how this lens interprets that kind of stuff. And then I will say for MPEG that uh, when we're saying raw, we are talking about almost straight out of the camera. Yeah, not literal. Kind of raw, raw thing, not not, not, raw, not being raw. literal raw. Yeah. Uh, MPEG is our engineer, and we love yeah. him for that. He's actually one of my favorite people to talk to because. He is super engineering knowledgeable, and I learned from him, like yeah. everybody else on this thing. Um, all right, so there's some of the Evil One footage. That's what we have there. Let's do this and this and this and pull these and do this and click this and do that. All right, there we are. So, untouched. Yeah, that's a better way to say it. Yes. Thank you, MPEG. See, once again, um, that mushroom could be magic. We don't know, Russ. We have no idea what's going on with that mushroom. Um, or for Stephen Grimes. And Grimes, yeah, video guys and plants. Oh, and shrooms. Well, Grimesy, let's be honest. You're a creative director. Can I just ask you a question? I'm going to ask you the question. You can answer it in the chat. When you're, a lot of these guys are professional shooters. Some of them are early shooters. Some of them are seasoned shooters. Some of them are recreational shooters. When you're looking at someone's reel and you're going to hire them, aside from the person being me, because you hired me because I am the awesomest you've ever met. And that was the exact quote you gave me that night when we were he both just no. hammered. I'm pretty sure he didn't say that. <laughs> you don't want to answer this question? <laughs> Is that what you're saying, Grimes? You don't want to answer the question? What you're looking at at people's reels? I just was curious. You're, you're an agency director. What do you look at when, when someone someone's reel pops up there and, and inspires you? Look at him, dude. I just lost a client. <laughs> Ladies and exactly. gentlemen, today on In Production, watch me lose my favorite client and friend, Grimesy. Old Six Top. He decided to join us. Thought it would be fun, he said. Let's go hang out with Drew and Jeff, he said. No. I think you guys do great work. And no. <laughs> Come on, Grimesy. Man. So how do you how do you uh how do you find a shooter that you like when you're looking at DPs as a creative director. Just throw that in the comments. So if you're not yeah. part of the live show, you missen the comments, and that's what's happening in the comments. Let's keep going. MPEG's right. We're fine. People need to know. Any noticeable rolling shutter? I did not notice any brain. Have uh, not seen yeah. any yet. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, sound. Sound Anthos. Got your name right again. Uh, I didn't notice anything. Brain, I don't know if, if you caught of any of it or not. Um, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, guys, you notice Grimes isn't responding, which means uh, that's the end of that. Seriously, I think I seriously might have just lost him. Just want to say, Grimes, I'm not super attached to Drew. <laughs> you, just, <laughs> you just straight sold me out. <laughs> Awkward. No, we'll keep going. Uh, a great test for no rolling shutter, though, is a uh, strobing flashlight. Yeah. Actually, it's a great way to test it. Yeah, there you go. Uh, a little strobe flashlight, your SWAT flashlight. That's what we need to have. Um, uh, why does your lens reels link say, we are sorry, you're ineligible for a reward? Oh, I don't oh. know. I'll fix it. I'll patch it back up. I'll throw it up there for you so you can be eligible for one. I have no idea. There we go. Grimes just answered. There you go, guys. Grimes answered right there. Stephen Grimes says, when reviewing, I try to see how many different scenarios they've shot and how diverse their storytelling is. There we go. Scott <laughs> Robinson comes in. Scott, you know me. I'll do anything. Yeah, Scott, you know this. Scott Robinson and Stephen Grimes should have met. That would have been a fun... Uh, you can But corner. not meet in New Orleans. But not meet in New Orleans. Yeah. Because that would have been... A Grimes is not the guy that got us hammered night. in New Orleans, Robinson. No. That was another dude. That yeah. was uh, that was a uh, tone change. Different guy. Yeah. Different guy. Um, so, yeah. So, so, there's some of the footage. We've looked at some of the Evil One footage. Just keep throwing up your questions on them. We'll answer them as we go along. My Sports Center just updated. Dee -dee -dee, which means... Nothing at the moment. Not um, right now. No. You got any questions you can answer while I uh, yeah, sort um, through some... Well, people talk, asking uh, or saying 4K 60p 8-bit is kind of disappointing. I actually kind of have to agree with Fabian on that. Uh, uh, are you kidding that, me? That it's a little disappointing. How is it disappointing? I just think it's disappointing to me that you have a camera that's one up of a GH5, and GH5 has 8-bit. Yeah. 
So good, I got it. I kind of think ten bit would would have been nice. Uh, it's not a deal breaker for me though. Yeah. So uh, You're I talking was talking about inside the evil one. Yeah. I'm confused. I was it's reading all about, something. All about the evil one. Yeah, yeah. Um, it doesn't bother me so much, um, only because I've seen what we've done in this this stuff looks fantastic. I've seen how you grade some log eight bit and it looks great. Yeah, no, and it doesn't bother me. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't really bother. Just cleaned it up. As a as a shooter though, I kind of like shooter only. I kind of like to have the option. No, here's my bigger thing yeah. with all Panasonic except for the yeah. Varicam is the simple fact that they refuse to give us variable frame rate. In different capacities. No, I agree. I need 48 yeah, I frames, want 48 a, second, frames a second. And I want 48 Panasonic. at 4K. I agree. That's what I want. Do I expect it to have a GH5? It would have been awesome. It would have been a major game changer, but they didn't give it to us. So instead, yeah. I'll deal with knowing that when I want to shoot my 48 style, which Grimes will attest to, is kind of like our jam. That's what he and I like and Jeff likes. That's what we do as a team very yeah. well. We have a style. Grimes can call me and say he knows the look he wants from me. Mm -hmm. That look... When we want that look, I have to break out the red. There's no yep. way around it, and oh, that's yeah, cool. Definitely. That's why I own a red, yep. right? I don't use the Scarlet. I use the Dragon for because the Scarlet actually doesn't do 4K 48. No. Does 2K, 3K yeah. 48. Or the Mysterium Scarlet. Don't. The Mysterium Scarlet, sorry. Yeah. We don't the have the one. The one that we have. Yeah. The two. Uh, yeah. One of them's just on the fritz. Yeah. Do you ever want to buy a used Scarlet? I'll sell it to you. $9.95. Going once, going twice. Sold. Oh, nobody answered. Okay, great. Uh, Sweet. Speaking of which... Brain's going to do some more for us. Brain's going to do more footage. Tomorrow. So yeah, just pop, pop it up and we'll, we'll throw more test footage as we go along. Yeah. Speaking of that, it's time for our favorite segment called That's What She Said. Ladies and gentlemen, prep it up. Cue the music. All right, so on this segment, we call it That's What She Said. We review one of our favorite trolling posts from the past week or from the last time we ever decided to throw them up there. So today's trolling post, we've gotten quite a few lately. I don't know what's going on with YouTube, but they are pushing the crap out of us a little bit, which is great. We're not paying for it. That's awesome. Woohoo! Exactly. We're getting a push. But in that push, we have found more and more trolls. I'm going to read my favorite troll because I think... It's pretty fascinating, and no offense to anyone. Someone got really offended, by the way, at one of my troll posts when I was saying maybe they don't speak English as a first language. That was not being a dick. That was actually saying maybe I'm not understanding what they're saying because they didn't speak English as a first language. I was trying to give someone the benefit of the doubt. So, again, that fellow, I apologize. I was not trying to... I, like, straight up apologize, bruh. I'm serious. Apologies. Not trying to offend you if you're not from America. Roll Tide. All right. So... Here's what we got. Here it is. Hype, hype, and more hype. I thought this was going to be a great 33-minute explanation of the firmware update by an informed Panasonic rep, but instead turned out to be a 33-minute session of let's pat each other on the back. Seriously, guys, do you realize that the far larger majority of people watching these videos, such as myself, are new GH5 owners wanting to learn the proper use of the camera? Most of the information presented here were merely hypothetical scenarios for the super advanced, most of which went way over my head. And for that reason, I'm out. And my only response is, talk to you later, T-T-Y-L, because I don't care. Yeah, I'm gonna talk about what I'm interested in. I don't, I don't really care one way or the other. That video that they're re referencing is Matt's interview. And if you are someone who's interested in understanding how to really use a camera, when the rep who works closely with the engineers is willing to talk and explain everything possible in that video, great. If you don't know what HDR and HLG and all that stuff is, guess what? It's time to pick up a book and learn. Guaranteed that guy no! or girl no, 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 no. or whatever they are no! is 100% a lazy millennial. I'm calling you out. Yep, I'm on that troll bait Ooh. right now. Lazy Let's go fishing. Yeah, we yeah. know a bunch of them. Yeah, we do. Dawson, Laura. I don't know if I call That's Laura a lazy millennial. They're not. She's not. Nobody's a lazy millennial. The, the you know, I didn't. I didn't defend Dawson at all. Dawson's. Dawson does he doesn't work. watch this because he doesn't get on the internet. Dawson does not because he's too cool for that. He grew a mustache. He shaved it. He grew it back. Because he realized that... I can't even think of something funny to say there. <laughs> I was trying to work one out. I just couldn't. Yeah, it didn't work. That's what she said. Um, anyway, point is, 
if you have a problem with it, look it up and study. Don't be some stupid hype anti guy. And the next thing is the red, the super pro red users that think that that we are trying to fool people into buying a red is still the one that cracks me up the most. Yeah. I don't give a shit what camera you shoot on. Whoa, shit, shit. I don't give a shit on what camera you shoot on. Shoot on whatever you want to shoot on that makes you happy. Use an iPhone X if you waited in line for 10 years like some of these people did for a freaking cell phone. Go for it. Meanwhile, while you're waiting in line, I'm shooting and learning and hanging out with a great community of people that are inspiring me as much as hopefully I don't inspire them because I'm a troll. That's what they call me. A bully. I'm a bully. You're a bully? Yeah. Yeah, you are. Yeah. All right. I'm done with that. Pow! And... I think the comments are still working. I don't even know anymore. I don't even know what's they happening. They are. There's a lot of comments. People are talking, comments are talking, back. talking. There's the comments. What I do with the comments? There's the comments. I can't see the comments. You can't see comments. That's what she said. Brain is doing our... Shittle. You know what's happening. Shirtle's coming soon. We're still doing it. Thing yeah. upon a manual. Yep. That was a baby seal moment, Trev. If I ever saw one, that was definitely no! that truly a baby was. seal one. And I like that when you said if it was a guy, it was a guy on the no. And when you said it was a girl, it actually turned to a girl on the no. Yeah, that was kind of funny. Yeah, I it thought went, it was it pretty good. Triplicate. Um, Just most people. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of sad to don't align yourself with any brand unless you're getting paid to do so. That's kind of my thing. Like, mm -hmm. I wouldn't align myself with any particular brand unless I'm... Or I see a major benefit that yeah. gives something away. Like, I don't know why the affiliate suddenly isn't working for yeah i don't uh, know that either we'll it could be you, maybe um uh who posted that it's uh you, you have you're a great you, uh, you do great back. reviews God, charbox blank, i think I, is who it was yeah charbox charbox aren't you out of the country it might be an issue that lens reynolds is not in the states aren't you out of the country i thought you were uh, i thought you were in europe i might be wrong i apologize um, oh it could be yes oh yeah trev also pointed out the raw thing did we talk about that yeah he well we did not but that is coming up yeah, that the the evil one will have a raw um, yep. update, which is going to be huge. That's pretty epic at that point. Uh, th that's a big deal. Yeah, he's in London. A lot better stuff. Yeah, you're in London. So it that might, might be the problem. That might be the reason why Charbox, unfortunately, yeah. they may not be international. I'm not totally sure. Oh, he's trying to rent while he's in the U.S. Oh, wild. Yeah, that is. I'll really give you weird. a link. I'll uh, I'll see if I can yeah. pull this affiliate link down and, and throw it up there. Um, but that's the code that they gave me to use uh, in our past videos. If, if not, dude, don't worry about it. I appreciate your, your, you trying, though. I really do. Um, your, the video you got from IBC was, was some of the stuff you got in there. And <laughs> you're the one that caught the guy saying, you know, got him looking uncomfortable on camera, which I thought was amazing. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, Brain Vision, Jacksonville Low Light Testing Landing. Yep, he's talking yep. about that stuff. Yep. All right, so we wanted to preview... Photography, I guess kind of evolved for me over time. My first passion has always been wildlife photography and then I actually worked with other photographers for about 10 years. Everything from running a dark room to commercial photography where we did a lot of architecture and we would do some food photography as well and I always enjoyed kind of the poking and prodding of what was on the plate but as I got older started really appreciating being healthy and what goes into my food and then it kind of all came together as far as wow this is a well-made meal this is a lot of thought went into this quality craft um, so then it kind of with photography came together for me on both sides I approach food photography subjectively at first kind of look at it feel it out emotionally how does it speak to me most of the times when a restaurant calls me, we have an idea ahead of time. I, I ask them, you know, how many shots do you want? Do you have an idea of what dishes you want to shoot? What are those dishes? And sometimes the, they will know, and if they know, maybe I'll go look on their Facebook to kind of see what it sort of looks like. Um, if they don't know and they just kind of want to wing it, you know, I'm usually good with that too. Um, I usually like to talk about how the dish is plated. You know, is it drowning in dressing? Maybe let's not put the dressing on completely. Let's drizzle it. Um, but then the chef too, when they plate it, usually actually seeing the finished product, that to me kind of inspires me. Wow, this cut of meat has this marble. I really like to accent this little cut right here. And then from there, I usually do simple lighting. It goes with the feel of the place too. If it's gonna be a dish shot at the haberdasher as opposed to a dish shot at like a 
sandwich lunch spot might be more bright and airy feel than kind of a cocktail bar at night. So that's kind of how I try to determine on the emotion of it. All right, so that's just a short, quick preview of the upcoming uh, SBC, Small Batch Creative, yes. is a new show we have coming out. You guys can kind of see what we did. What we want to do is get other community members to go find somebody interesting like Elise or something like that yeah. to shoot these little pieces. We throw them up. Everybody wins. Um, you know, we, we put it out there. Obviously, uh, there's no credits done on this one yet, but there will be credits. And it's that kind of thing of like, if you have a channel, we'll do a collab thing. But the, yeah. the purpose of it is, is to take uh, the content, put it together, make some really cool, inspiring little stories. Uh, and Elise uh, touches on it some there. She's a, a moved from wildlife photography where she has all these really amazing like um, photographs from Africa and really great story setting on up into we wanted her to talk about food photography because originally that's what we thought the story was going to be about until we started like spending yeah. time with her and we just Jeff and I both just noticed you know as you, you interview enough people you, you find what they're passionate about versus what they want to talk or what you've asked them to talk about yeah. and she, as Jeff brought up very easily she like whenever we brought up um, wildlife photography and started going down her her kind of her poaching track like she just would it would flow out of her and it was just very easy and she was just very into it versus the food stuff she had to think about it she's passionate about it but and there's a passion that's there for yeah. it but the passion is there from photography and that all just motivates gaps between her going and doing some you know insanely good wildlife shots which we have on the front mm -hmm. uh, front half of the video so that was shot uh, with a bunch of different techniques. Obviously, a lot of that is 8K, uh, 8K, 4K, 8-bit, <laughs> 60. Yeah. Um, shot that way so we could kind of put a dream in it. We've shot in the Haberdasher. Yep. I filmed a lot of stuff in the yeah. Hab. They're film friendly, which is awesome because Elise owns it, and she's awesome. And all of her people are cool. All of her people are cool. You're going to probably end up seeing a Meet lot a of them. a couple of them, yeah. Yeah, because a lot of them are really talented artists yeah. that have a passion outside of working there. They just, she's very cool to her employees yeah. about being creative. Um, and they're really like a family. So it's, it's yeah. you know, if I were younger and, and needed it, that'd be like one of the places I'd like to be. Yeah. Well, I like being there. Well, yeah. But I drink I up all my profits. There. Yeah. <laughs> I drink up all my profits. Great beer selection, cocktails, yeah. all that. If you're ever coming through, not to shamelessly plug them, but you should hang out with them. Let's pop them comments back. Uh, up so, yeah, I will answer Espen and Trevor. Yeah, it was 4K 8 bit shot on a GH5 at 60p. Uh, with the Movie. In a lot of places. Movie Pro. Movie the one Pro. that we showed on the last live show. Yep. We also had the lens adapters playing. We yep. had all that stuff. We so did. we had uh, Metabone, Speed Booster, Ultra, and crap. The Ultra yeah. and the other one. XL. Yes. We had the Ultra and the XL. That was the two. Uh, some of the shots were a vintage lens. Where is that guy? I'll grab it. Which one? Oh, yeah. Our great vintage Minolta lens that we have. Yeah. Uh, it's somewhere. Are we? Sh no, we're not shooting on it. It shouldn't be in the bag. Actually, for a second there, I thought we were shooting on it, but that's not true. No, that's not it. Uh, I don't think I brought it with me. I, I hope you didn't. It had been nice to shoot the other thing that we were supposed to be shooting yesterday on it. But, no, I, uh, I, I had a Yeah. Reason. Scott R., I'm the same way. I tried to do food photography before, too, but, uh, yeah, I like to eat the food more than photograph it. Actually, food uh, photography is brutally hard. I think It's we incredibly would... hard. We should so do we were using this. with it. Which, just to show um, you guys... Multi-adapters? Yeah, so we have... This is a, a, a vintage um, a Rokor, Rockor, whatever, Minolta lens. Uh, it's a 1.7 native. And so then we add this uh, adapter that makes it to EF here. I'm sure this is not even in focus. Who cares? Oh, it looks like it is. Yeah, it's not bad. It's and then um, from there, this adapter. Then we have the speed booster on top, so we gained another stop. So we are like some crazy uh, F-stop yeah. at that point. Um, and then it, it, using the XL, it got us almost, this is a 50 and it almost got us back to a 50. Um, the only downside was when we put it on the Ronin, um, or the, I'm sorry, the Movi, it was a little tricky to use on the Movi, but it's one of our favorite lifestyle lenses just because it, it puts this, these flares, um, her interview was shot with that. Yeah. The yeah. close up one was, or the, the close, closer. Yeah. The closer of the two was the, shot with The, that. uh, Deacon's 40 look. Yeah. Was yeah. shot with that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the, the vintage lens on that side of it. So that's part of the thing about the SBC is there's no rules to it. It's just tell the story. So, like, it, even if it needs to be cell phone footage, I don't really care. I think that's the fun of it is challenging ourselves. And if anybody's interested in doing one or know someone, they can do one. Do one on yourself if you've got a buddy that will film you and, and make it cool. Yeah. I don't really care. There's I think a few it's people awesome. in this community I'd like to see, actually. Yeah, Ichi, stories. I'd love to see one from you, bro. I would. 
because there's because I know <laughs> I don't for a fact. Call anybody no, out, I'll call him out. That, I know for a fact your passion for anamorphic is an anamorphic shoot that he just dude, did recently is amazing. Somebody do one on Ichi. Ichi, I don't know where you live, brother, but like straight up. I want to think, think he's a Norway dude. No, he's not. I think he's in the states. I don't think he's in the states. I don't know, Ichi. Where are you, know. bro? Anyway, somebody do one. Other part of that is I can't wait for you guys to see this HDR footage that we drop. Sully, you've seen the HDR footage that you shot that Jeff graded. I, yeah, so I'm I've still just like floored at how good it looks. Um, that stuff is absolutely outstanding. Well done. Um, I've got notes for you uh, just to help you grow, but that's offline stuff that we yeah. have a combo about. That's Me just too. Yeah. when directors and producers and editors look at content. We'll just give you some notes to yeah. help you grow in that space. Unless you want to share it here, and that's up to you, bro. That's totally up to you. Uh, ah, Netherlands. The Netherlands. Amsterdam. Do you got another shooter, Ichi, that could do one of these kind of things on you, man? I'll send the questions. All you got to do is, or you can film yourself. Yeah. I don't really care. I just, your work is like, obviously you have a passion for it that goes beyond something in, all of us do. And that's why I'm trying to get everybody to send this one. Suddenly we all have a ton of content. I think it'd be fun and there's no wrong way to show it. Like there's literally nothing wrong with it. You interface. So then your content's in front of people like Grimes or other creative yeah. directors. Do, do follow this channel, by the way. So... It's just a way to help you, but more importantly, it's just a cool way to motivate. Um, I'd like to know why you do what you do. I think it's important. It helps me when I'm having my dark times. We've talked about it before. I have dark times, and when I'm having one of those, the best way out of it is not going on Facebook to the GH5 user groups, except for the creative. And and <laughs> <laughs> it's actually like watching those videos of people being motivated to do stuff. And I don't mean like a vlog. I'm talking about like telling me a story that's very specific, a passion-driven why you do what it is that you do um anyway that's yeah. a long rant it's typical typical uh typical flow mm -hmm. um what do we got i can't get enough of each stuff i know right it's insane yeah oh yes we'll do oh killer man yep. yeah you can kick it over and we'll do what you gotta do to tag it or if you want us to cut it then we'll figure out a way to cut it for you if you just want to give us the footage and we'll do we it we can our cut own. it we can color it you can do the edit you can yeah i mean I however really you want to take it we'll, yeah we'll do it i mean however you want to do it i'd love to cut some of your footage i think it'd be fun i'm sure jeff would love to grade some of your I'd stuff Your work is really it, good yeah. so however you want to do it um oh thomas there you go thomas from amsterdam yeah uh anybody else want to do one we'll take it Seriously, yeah. I think it would be fun, and it'll be much more interesting to show a very diverse world. Oh, there's so many talented of, people in this group. I know it's crazy, James Dean. I expect one from you, and I want you to talk about. Uh, I kind of want one on MPEG. Yeah, MPEG. He's a, for some reason, an engineer that is truly. Yeah. Yeah. So what he's doing on MPEG? Kind of I don't know where you guys are. We we'll have to figure out how to yeah. do it. Yeah, we there's so totally many of these. Have one. Um. Crazy. Oh, I came across Ichi stuff from researching the Sanker 16. It's amazing. I know, right? I mean, yeah. It's the Ichi show. Uh, I want to do one on my daughter. All right. That's All right. cool. Yeah. If you're cool with that, we're totally down for it. Awesome. MPEG, I'd love that, man. And like I said, if you don't want to cut it or you don't have time to cut it, just coordinate with us. You've yeah, got our email, we'll Drew at craftshow.com, Jeff at craftshow.com. Send us an email. We'll figure a way to pull the footage oh, down. Oh, she has Dude, Actually, do is it. an interesting Send story, Send us whatever yes. you want to do. Do the story. We want to keep them like, the only thing that I'll give you a heads up, I'm going to always try and keep them between seven, at, at the upper end, seven minutes. Um, and then we'll go from there. And the goal eventually is to get so many of these going that we find a way to get brands. Once those videos get selected, then money comes out, money exchanges hands, people get paid. And even though we're just trying to tell cool stories, if it funds telling more of those cool stories, yeah. I mean, meaning you tell that story, then we can keep doing that. And I think the only way to do it, it's not crowdsourcing because, again, I'm asking for it selfishly from me, but I think what happens is we start building something that's really unique. And it doesn't have to be through all these crazy broadcast standards. Eventually, you know, legal stuff gets in the way, but for now, we get to be kind of rogue. We get to be the, the run and gun camera. We get to be the baby seal troll force telling stories. Dude, yeah. Matter. So I'd, I'd love, I'd love, love, love to have one. I think so. Um, by the way, Me Too is trending in our country right now. Oh, good. Uh, I'm glad and that. also sad at the same time. Yeah. The fact that it is trending uh, is sad yeah. that it The exists fact that it has way. to sad, yeah. that it has to be trending is... How much of a bummer is it that Kevin Spacey is such a bag-o-douche? Yeah. All that shit, man. Shittle. Yeah. 
It gets me rowdy, man. I get pretty pissed off. It does me too. It gets me rowdy for the other aspect, which I told you about, which will never be fixed. Yeah. So that part. And you know, and like I've said, my like, luckily, I don't think she saw it very much. But you know, uh, watching and knowing that my wife works in this industry, in the film industry, um, obviously she's very aware of it, and she's pretty tough lady. She married me for some stupid reason, but she has to deal with it too. And so it's kind of nice to see that. And you know. I've met some really great producers that are so far from that, it's not even funny, that are just some of the most outstanding. I've seen producers, and there's a producer that watches this show, and I'm calling you out without saying your name, but there's a producer that watches this show that is the most honest producer I've ever met in history that, hands down, will go out of his way to make sure the crew gets treated fairly. Absolutely. 100%. I agree. So much so that his union negotiation tactic is honesty. (laughs) (laughs) And it works better than anything else. It does. So, you know... That exists. It's just sad that it's the other end of it exists, and it yeah. seems like it's much bigger issue. Um, there's some thing that went around that's like, if you're ever in question about it, just treat everyone like you're talking to the Rock, and I think that's like the greatest thing in the world, and and it just balances you back out. Yeah. Um, just treat everybody like you're talking to the Rock. Uh, yeah. He can punch you in the face and rip your head off at any given moment. Uh, so you have a mutual respect thing. Um, it's just more a matter of like, I don't know why people would even. The sleaze bag to try that garbage, it's absolutely yeah. ridiculous. And there's a lot of them. Yeah. Unfortunately. Did you see the last report that came out on Weinstein sending professional spies to gain intel on these girls? Wow. I yeah. did see that. Yeah. It's terrible. It's, yeah. it's, it's. And I did not terrible. see that Spacey was pulled from the Masterclass website. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have our own Weinstein guy here. Uh oh. Who's that? I don't know what it is. I have no idea. Who's the new Weinstein guy? Is it me? Weinstein no, I think case. it's over in his area where he lives. Oh, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Yeah, it's terrible stuff. Um, yeah, well, the, the Kevin Spacey backlash, here's here's where it's bad enough that it happens to uh, you know people working on these projects. The worst part of it is the number of people that potentially lose their jobs over these situations is what's really mm-hmm. how bad... And, and heinous this stuff is. So it's heinous because it's attacking individuals, uh, it's manipulating, it's yeah. stealing, it's raping, it's whatever you want to call it. It's negative, awful, hate shittle, and it's happening to people. But the trickle-down effect is so uh, awful that it then it just spills into other people's lives. And now, like, oh, yeah. you know, House of Cards is gone. I mean, yeah. luckily they were nice enough. I think I read something that they might be on a definite pay. Yeah, they've been paying this whole time they've been off as well. Right. Just to cover um, up for it or deal with it? or I know. think it's just to deal with it for the crew. Yeah. Uh, I know a few people that are on that show. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, they're panicked right now. But yeah, but... It's, they're getting ready to lose their job. They're getting ready... And, you know, but their production know. company is doing what... Our producer friend that we were just talking about yeah. would have done for somebody yeah, if he absolutely. had the option to do it. Absolutely right. 100% right. Um, and I'm not saying the person's name just to, to protect the innocent. Um, yes. Yeah. It is. It's, it's, a, it's a wacky situation. When the most important casting director in our country... Re- oh, gosh. Jay Fu, that's terrible. Yeah. That's absolutely terrible. It's worse. It's never worse. It's all bad. It's equally bad across the board. A casting director, though, is like in one of those spots where they're totally manipulating the situation. Yes. Uh, and you know it. And like, I, I joke, I have a couch in my office for clients to sit yes. on that has never been coipled. Is yes. that a word? I just made it up. Coitled? Coitus? So if you have coitus, do you coital? Do you coitled? I guess so. Yeah. It's never been coitled on that we know of, that I know of. That I know of. <laughs> yeah, Jeff would hear it. Or maybe you weren't here. You know, in fairness. But we're both um, always here. I still think it's incredible serving just how many people knew, watched, and told people to keep quiet and and uh, just toe the line. That's insane. Yeah. This is the truth about the, the film industry and the creative industry um, is that once people have that level of success, it's so hard to get there. I'm not defending it, by the way, but it's so hard to get there. It's not that I understand and agree with. It's that... I can see why they would do that because it's you fight yeah. to get up that chain and then suddenly you get there and you're like, well, I didn't see it happen. You know, and it's one of those things. It's like there's human, humanitarian efforts we see all the time, but look at our world. It's easier to go after and talk about, I, I'm, I don't know, Miley Cyrus or something. I don't, I don't know if she's trendy anymore or not. I have no idea. But, it, but there's 
obviously major issues going on throughout our country and the world that mm -hmm. we neglect because there's some other student. Our president, for example, will spend more time tweeting than he does actually doing anything, in my opinion, political to help anything. Whether right, whether he's a good guy or bad guy is a separate issue. He's in office, and t Twitter is not a part of, the, of what yeah. I want to see the president. I just don't. If the if the White House wants to tweet, fine, go for it. Make some fun little tweets. Let people follow it. Uh, get news from it. But our president does not need to be responding to every single post that's going on. Instead, should yeah. be out proactively doing things to cause change instead of sitting on his laurels. It's frustrating. That's the same way I see the society, at least in the States. I can't speak to other countries. I only live in this one. And I watch more people doing more damage and doing very little to help each other out because they just turn, they just turn mm -hmm. the other cheek until a national disaster happens yeah. and we think about it for two weeks and then something funny happens on SNL and we forget about it. And that's the way we flow down things. And instead, yes. like, we're just a mass populace of consumers. And I will say from filming with a lot of different producers in other areas of the country, the below the line and above the line is definitely a difference. Right. Uh, that is going to be way too long of a discussion to talk about, which right. you kind of already ran it on. Right. Uh-oh, we got secret languages happening up in the chat now. We do. With Ichi and his pals. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I caught wind of uh, somebody else. I'm not going to break it here, but I caught wind of somebody else from a friend that uh, is a pretty notable director that's about to get nailed, uh, according to them. I, I, you know, it's all hearsay until it happens, but apparently um, uh, it's, it's not good. Um, yeah. Here we go. Post-coital glow is always a win. I wouldn't consider it to be a grammatical, though. <laughs> That's great. Coital. Coital's a word. Coitus and coital. You commit coital? Coitillery? That's your bits. <laughs> your bits are coitillery. <laughs> it's like cutlery, but coitillery. Yeah. You commit coital. Or you commit coitus and post-coital. Because coital is post-coital is a phrase. I think post-coital is a correct phrase. It is. It is yeah. a correct phrase. Yeah. All right, well, that's going to do it. I'm done yeah, talking about we Quintus. should. Yeah, we have to go to work. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Click some links. I'll pop the video up. I just got to redo all the metadata crap for it to pop up correctly. But I'll pop it up. You guys take a look. If you have a chance, check out the HDR version of it. It's solid. Uh, obviously, be mindful that you're going to see a little bit of an SDR down version when it drops. Yes, We're still trying to sort it. We talked about it working in the video. Yeah. It works kind of, but kinda not to the works. level we want. So yeah. technically, we didn't lie to you, but I'm giving you guys a heads up now. We yeah. kind of lied to you. There are some things, and we'll get hit for it, and we'll take the hit. Yeah. Uh, but please watch it in HDR. Yeah, watch it in HDR. All right. Until later, I'm going to kill the stream, but leave the chat up. If you have any other questions, feel free to do that. Oh, and Penner shows up right when